May God bless you as I greet you with the peace of God. God bless everyone tonight and thank God for all of those who are on the platform, amen, and on their way. We thank God for his mercy to us. And I like to often say that in the, that in the midst of turbulence, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of confusion and chaos and death and destruction and disease and famine, in the midst of racial, racial prejudice, um, uh, political chaos and uh, economic collapse, God is still God. And that's why we can praise him, not because we feel like it, we praise him because God is God and his mercy endures forever. And God will, God will have the last word and God will have the last act. Uh, it doesn't always appear like God is in control, but when we say God is in control, we mean that God is in charge, which means everything ultimately is in God's um, last word and God's last action. Let's approach the throne of God just now. Father, we, we come boldly to your throne. Prompt to do it. Prompt to engage you as a good God, as the God of all flesh. We say along with Jeremiah, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for thee. I pray along with David, O oh God, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Send your word and heal. Send your word tonight and deliver. Send your word tonight and encourage. And I ask that you would take your truth, tailor it to fit each one of us. Break your word down into bite-sized pieces so that all of us can be fed on your word. I pray that you would allow me to experience the moment of the teacher the moment of the exhorter, the moment of the oracle. I pray let it not merely come from me, but through me to wit that at the end of this exercise, during the course of this sacred enterprise, your people, your sons and daughters, your students, will be challenged and charged and changed, encouraged, uplifted, healed and delivered. And as you have so stated to the people that followed you when you were on the path, when you were on the earth, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What are the seeds of our future, oh God? I appeal to your mercy tonight for each and every one of us, for each and every family member, whatever the situation may be tonight. We thank you for meeting our needs. Take us to school, Holy Spirit, as I acknowledge you just now. In the name of the Messiah, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Tonight, I want to I want to call this a meditation because um, I kind of want to just take my time with it. Uh, we're we're going to teach a little bit. I'm going to exhort you a little bit, encourage you a little bit, but I want to call it a meditation because I really want to take each verse. Uh, and word that I deal with in a very, and I want to deal with it in a very calculated fashion. So I often say, listen with two ears, listen with two sets of ears, your natural ears and your spiritual ears, and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. You know, pray that. Holy Spirit, you know what I need. Speak to me tonight. Speak to me where I am. God will, God will meet you right where you are. Um, I hope you got a chance to read 
I'd like to give you a reading homework assignment and I hope you got a chance to, to go over uh, Second Chronicles chapter seven and Isaiah chapter nine. And I believe I also gave you Acts chapter, Acts chapter 16. Um, I do my best to follow a kind of, a kind of flow when it comes to series, like uh, trying to teach, uh, endeavoring to teach a series of lessons. But I'm also a prayer and I pray Lord direct me, guide my thoughts and my speech and my, um, the methods of my study to give to your people what they need or what your will is. And I always carry a burden when it comes to affliction and sickness and disease. And um, we are all standing in the need of God's divine intervention. And God performed a miracle for a, a, a member of my family. And I like to sow that. Whenever God blesses you with something, whenever God does something to you, sow that back into the kingdom. The Bible says, given it shall be given. It doesn't always, of course, it does mean uh, you know, your finances, of course, because the Bible says where your heart is, there is your treasure. But it doesn't only mean finances. It means whatever God has blessed you with, give it, give it, sow it. You can encourage someone else with what God has done for you. Uh, because each one of you have something to give to this generation and to give members of the body of Christ to, to give your family. Amen. And that's why God wants to bless you. Did you hear me? Don't let the devil lie to you to tell you, well, you got to twist God's arm to bless you because so much bad has happened. And if God really wanted to bless you, he would have done it, done it already. Uh, all you have to do is think about where you would be if it had not been for God's grace and mercy. And God blesses you according to Ephesians chapter one and verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. That's past tense. So blessing is not something we're trying to get. I mean, as members of the body of Christ, it's not something that we're trying to get. It is something that we are. But God has a divine strategy. He has, he has a plan behind the scenes. God blesses you for the purpose of getting an investment return. Did you hear me? God blesses you to get a, an investment return. God blesses you because he loves you, first and foremost. But he also wants to use you to be a blessing to someone else. I am blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Because you can't give someone what you don't have. Second Corinthians chapter one says that we comfort others. It is our, it is God's plan that we comfort others with the comfort that we ourselves have been comforted with. See, that's, that's excellent because it puts the responsibility upon God. God wants something to happen to us, something in us, so something can happen through us. Amen. That's why the ministry of the church, ministry of you as believers, believers in God, those of you, those of you that are not, is yours for the asking. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, um, just write this verse down because I'm going to quote it. Um, we can go, we can go there, we can go there later, but uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5 says that ye also, this is King James, ye also as lively stones or as living stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, listen to it, a holy priesthood to offer up, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God 
by Jesus Christ. Did you get it? We don't have to sacrifice animals, but we offer up. Did you get it? Your first ministry is vertical. Listen to me, church, to offer up spiritual sacrifices. So when Hebrews chapter 13 speaks of offering a continuous thanksgiving that the writer of Hebrew calls Hebrews chapter 13, I believe it's verse 15, to offer the fruit of our lips continually giving thanks unto his name. The sacrifice of praise. Why does he call it a sacrifice of praise? Now listen, we we can ref, we can allude to the concept and the notion and the idea that we give God a sacrifice of praise and we do it even when we don't feel like it. And we call that a sacrifice because it costs you something and you do it as a sacrifice because emotionally or circumstantially, it seems like there's no reason to do it because I don't feel like it. And circumstances actually dictate the very opposite. That's good. But the essence of the sacrifice is the duty of the priesthood. And you, beloved brothers and sisters, members of the cosmic body of Christ, or the universal body of Christ, the church, you are kings and priests unto God, according to to the book of Revelation. Did you get it? So to sacrifice praise, sure, you do it when you don't feel like it, but it becomes your duty because that's your ministry. That's your assignment. That's your calling. So we offer that because you now, you are a holy priesthood. That's 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Offer up spiritual sacrifice. What is a spiritual sacrifice? We give God thanks. We give God praise. Thank you, Lord. We adore you for you are good and your mercy endures forever. You are the creator of the universe. You sacrifice your son, Jesus, to die for me. I worship you and I thank you because you have forgiven my sins. You have washed me in your precious blood. You are the creator of the universe. We adore you. We bless you. That's a sacrifice. That's what the priesthood does. Then we pray. Amen. We pray. That's a spiritual sacrifice. We, 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 we offer our time and our gifts. We give our gifts. We, we offer our gifts and the blessings and the talents that God has given us. And we, 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 uh, we commit them to the Lord. We consecrate them to the Lord. These are spiritual sacrifices. To walk in love is a spiritual sacrifice. To forgive others who have wronged us is a spiritual sacrifice. So our to offer up, get it now, but especially praise because we, when, you know why? Because praise is the highest language of faith. To thank God for something, listen, sister, brother, to thank God for something before you see it is a highest, is the highest language of faith. To say thank you, Lord, for something even before you see it is the highest language of faith. That's why when we pray, you also pray with thanksgiving according to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 and following. Be careful for nothing or don't worry about even one single thing, but in everything by number one prayer and then supplication. That's asking for your specific situation. Prayer. Supplicate prayer is a kind of worshipful prayer, a kind of praise that acknowledges God's attributes. You do that, then you create sacred space, and then you petition. To supplicate means to beg specifically, to, to plead with the need meter, to meet your need specifically, and then with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. You'd be surprised how many people will pray, but they forget to thank. And if it is true that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, then most of our prayer should be thank you. It's just making a withdrawal, withdrawal, withdrawal. 
Brother White, this is gonna help me. <laughs> Withdraw <laughs> out of our heavenly bank account. Thank you. What is thank you? Eucharistus. Uh, to give thanksgiving. That's the Greek word Eucharistus. EU is the cognate. EU means good. Charis. Charistus. That's the root word. Charis. C H A R I S. The root word is graces. So when we thank God, when you see the Bible says give thanks, especially in the New Testament, Eucharistus, it means be conscious, cognizant, reflective, remembering God's good graces to you. What is his grace? His unmerited favor. Things you did not have to pay for, God paid for it through the through the blood of his son and gave it to you free of charge. And when someone does you a favor, what do you say? Let the church say, thank you. And we should offer, and then Hebrews 13, 15 says, continually give thanks. I'm telling you, it is one of the most powerful weapons as spiritual strategies and spiritual sacrifices that we have in the body of Christ. And as much as we have talked about it, you'd be surprised how little it, it really is manifested. This is why our mouth, the fruit of our lips, he calls it fruit. Our mouths must catch up with thanksgiving. Our mouths must catch up with praise. A praying church is a staying church, but let me tell you something, a praising church is an advancing church. Oh, I wish I had a witness tonight on this line. A, praise, a praying church is a staying church, but a praising church is an advancing church. Because even when, even it's a, it's, a, it's a church that moves on in advancing in spiritual warfare, because even in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, when God, when Jehoshaphat sought God, what, what should we do with all the enemies that are surrounding us? He told them, send forth Judah first. Put Judah first, praise. Put the praises first. Not That seems so ridiculous. They're not skilled warriors. Ah, but they are. That's why David was such a powerful strategist and a powerful warrior because he was a praiser and a worshiper. And when you are a worshiper, you are a warrior because God gives you strategies to win. Praise goes first. I want to give somebody a word tonight. Send Judah first. Oh, I know you pray, but send up Judah. Judah means praise. Send up Judah. Send forth Judah. That's how you advance. That's how you seize the ground. That's when the miracle manifests. Go ahead and try. Amen. Now. So uh, tonight, for the next few moments, because I want to begin to pray. So I'm going to take about uh, just a little beyond the bottom of the hour, because maybe 20 minutes or 15 minutes too, I want to start praying for those who need healing. Uh, and so for the next several weeks, I want to deal with this. What did I say for the last two weeks? God's attitude and I want to say it again, because this is something that came to me. I'm not one who always says, God spoke to me, God spoke to me, God spoke to me that way. That's a very sacred statement. Um, I'm careful about saying that. But I will say in the middle of my communion with God, studying and praying and seeking God, um, uh, in general, the thought for my Wednesday class, February 11th, about 4 a.m. on a Friday, and this was going for the next for next Wednesday. The thought came to me: God's attitude towards sickness, disease, and oppression. And of course, personally, I always have a burden when it comes to that because this is even what the Eucharist is about. The communion is about. If communion was just for the forgiveness of sins, all we need is the blood. But Jesus's body was also broken. Jesus's body was also wounded with thirty-nine stripes. And he said, it is by, why, why, why was his body wounded with, with 39 stripes? So that the son of man, Yeshua ben Yusuf ben Yahweh, uh, Hamashiach, Mashiach, um, the, Jesus the Messiah, um, Mashiach, the, the anointed one, Jesus Christos, 
the smeared one of God so that he could declare by my stripes, you are healed. And I'm gonna tell you why that's so important tonight. Even if we only get to one portion of scripture because we, we are going to spend a few moments in prayer and specifically, specifically, specifically for those who need healing in their bodies, who are on the line, or you have family members. And when we begin to pray, all I'm gonna do is just ask you to just mention the name. You can unmute and mention the name if you want to, or just say it right where you are. Because when we speak, when we when we respond uh, in like fashion, uh, you know, when I say put your hand on your forehead or speak out the name or speak out the prayer request, it doesn't, it's not that God doesn't know, but these are points, these are faith points of contact. It, it's a way to release your faith. It's not that God doesn't know about it. He does. But he also said, pray. Seek my face. Seek me with all of your heart and I will show unto you great and mighty things. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy, late, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Notice he knows about our heavy laden, but he says, come to me. And he says, approach the throne of God with boldness that you may receive a well-timed help or grace and mercy in the time of need. Then he say, he said, pray without ceasing. God already knows what we need, but it's this divine human reciprocity, the give and take. Your father wants to hear from you. Yeah, he takes pleasure. This is Psalm 149, three and four. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and the harp. Verse four, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Did you know that you are beautiful because of salvation? Listen, you are beautiful in the natural, but your beauty is enhanced because of the salvation of God. Holiness is not drab and dull. No, no, no. Holiness is attractive. Holiness is beautiful. Mm, mm, mm. You look good in holiness. Did you hear me? You know what that means? You look good with the glory of God all over you. You look good with the garment of praise. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm talking specifically to you, my brother, and specifically to you, my sister. Amen. Last month, the, the nation celebrated um, what we call, what the nation calls Black History Month. It's interesting, the shortest month of the year. Let me tell you something. Black history is every day every day of the month, every day of every week of every month of the year. Every day is black history. This is women's month. And I know, I appreciate that we have months and times where we single out moments to acknowledge, but guess what ladies, guess what women, every day we celebrate you. Every day I celebrate you. Not, not to authenticate you or to validate you women, because I'm not God, I can't do that. You are already authenticated and validated by the handiwork of your creator. So compliments to your maker. Yes, please. Wanted to give you that daughters of destiny. Amen. So every day that you give God praise, every day that you pray, Lord, let your will be done in my life every day that you seek his face, every day that you talk to him and get in the scriptures, you are fulfilling the, your calling as a woman, of, as a woman, as a female, as a lady of the Lord on this planet earth. And every day, black man and woman, that you seek God's face and, and entrenched in his holiness and his uniqueness and his holy other than-ness, <laughs> if I can use that. You are, for, you are making black history. You do not have to pass on to leave a legacy. Because of the fact that you are already blessed, every step you take in God's purpose, you are leaving legacy behind you. All right, that's free. All right, go to the, the book of Acts chapter, chapter three. And I'm calling this a meditation because if I don't, I'm gonna yell and I'm gonna talk a mile a minute. So even if for the next 15 minutes, we just stay here, that's okay. I just want you to get these points. Meditation, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm continue with, I'm going to continue uh, with this next week, the Lord willing. 
Acts chapter three, God's attitude towards sickness, disease and oppression, today's meditation. So next 10 or 15 minutes or so, and then we're going to pray. So if you know someone and you know, mention their name or get them online um, so that we can pray. Now, beginning with verse one, and I'm going to use the New King James. Get your writing, get whatever you write with or take notes with. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. I like this. The hour of prayer, the ninth hour. Let me tell you, all scripture. First uh, Timothy chapter three and sixteen, or is it Second Timothy? Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter three. Well, let me look. This is class. I get these two verses. Um, a little mix up. It's either first or, or second Timothy. So it's second Timothy three. Yes. Second Timothy three and 16. All scripture is given by inspiration. And just that next statement and is profitable. All scripture is given by inspiration. Theonustos. It means God breathe. It means air, breath, wind. So when we're getting into the scriptures, you're also getting into the, 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 the breath and the wind of God, wind being symbolic of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, that's one good thing. Let me tell you something. You know how you can get winded? Sometimes it's called winded or lose your breath. It's an, another way of saying lose, you lose your energy. Let me tell you something. The word of God will give you your breath back. It'll help, it'll help you catch your breath. So all of it is profitable. And remember, when we read scripture, this is the this is the task of the of the of hermeneutics, the science of interpretation. There's always one central meaning to scripture. You don't take a text out of context to prove some some theory or some something that you want to prove. You leave the verses in the context. There's a central meaning. But there are always many, many, many applications, many prophetic spiritual applications. Okay, so you have you have you have the first level of the prophetic scriptures. God speaks to you right now. That's a rhema, like like Jesus speaking to Peter when he didn't when he was fishing all night and didn't catch anything, and then he told Peter launch out into the deep to get a big draft of fish, to get a big catch. That was a word directly to Peter. But this is then this, there's the second level of the prophetic. It's when you read a verse like this, or you read about um, Moses and the children of Israel before the Red Sea. Well, I'm not Moses and I wasn't the children of Israel there, but it was prophetic scripture. And so you can seek God. And approach God and say, now, Lord, I'm before something that is like a Red Sea. It is impossible to cross. I've got, I've got impassable, impossible to pass <laughs> water before me. There's no way. And I can't swim. When I look to my right, there's nothing but the wilderness. When I look to my left, left there's nothing but mountains. And behind me, there are enemies. So just like you help Moses and you spoke to Moses and you use Moses and you you made a way through that impossible situation. Lord, I come before you right now. Make a way for me. Make a way for my family. Divide this impossible situation. That's when you seek God and you say this word is to me. And of course, God can quicken it and make it exactly. That's why I pray, Lord, tell of the word. Let it fit where we are. And then, of course, there's that prophecy that comes from being in Christ and in the body of Christ that is going to be fulfilled. The trump of God is going to sound and we're all going to be caught up. However, that's going to happen. That's a prophecy to be fulfilled for all of us. So that's why we seek God with the word, because the task of scripture is to move from the then 
to the now. Otherwise, it's not profitable. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. Let's call this the hour of prayer. The ninth hour, and I love biblical numbers because numbers have prophetic um, reality and prophetic applications, prophetic meaning all through the scriptures. Now, it's interesting because the number three is the number of spiritual uh, perfection, the number three. But notice that the product of three and three is number nine. Number three, so three times three is nine. And so when you look, when you trace the number nine throughout scripture, you see spiritual manifestation or, or this is another way to say it. Nine means completion at the end of a matter and the beginning of something new. Now keep that in mind. Cause then when we get to 10, cause remember it is the end of single numbers. Now I'm saying this because I want you to take advantage of this moment. We take advantage of teachable moments. Three is the number of spiritual perfection. Nine is the number of spiritual manifestation, right? It's one thing to be taught a lesson about God. It's another to experience God. You'll understand, ex to understand the experience of the lesson. Because now you can go give that because it happened to you. All right. So remember that. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I shouldn't say remember, but 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Put this in your notes. The, it, it outlines the gifts of the spirit and they are divided into three groups and they equal nine. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gifts of the spirit, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom and uh, discernment of spirits are gifts of knowledge. Then you have. Um, the gift of prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues or diverse kinds of languages, and the interpretation of tongues or interpretation of languages. These are gifts of speech, three, three. And then you have three gifts of power, the working of miracles, the gifts of healing, and the gift of faith. These are works of miraculous power. Nine altogether divided into three categories. The, li the list goes on. Galatians chapter five, you have nine fruit of the spirit. Really it's not nine fruit of the spirit. We could call it nine manifestations because the first one is love. The fruit of the spirit is love. And then it says joy, peace, patience, a long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. So all those fruit are manifestations of love. That's another subject. But I want you to get this because tonight can be the beginning. It can be the end of a matter and the beginning of something new. And 10 is the number of foundation. So it's something to stand on. All right. That's just that one verse. Now, Peter and John, again, for those that are co just coming in. Now, uh, we're in Acts chapter 3, verse number 1. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer the ninth hour. Let me tell you something. When you pray, things happen. When we pray, things happen. Things that we cannot do in the natural. And this is why the Bible says men ought always to pray and not faint. Verse two, and a certain man, we're not going to get past, uh, past this portion tonight. But I got lots of other verses. So that's why I said I'm going to call this a meditation because I'm not going to try to give you a whole a whole lot. A certain man, whenever you see in the New Testament the word certain, it means it is very important, very prophetic, very applicable. A certain man lame from his mother's womb, meaning he did not know a day when he was not lame. He couldn't, he couldn't, his mobility was gone. He never knew what it was to walk. Listen to me carefully now. He never knew what it was to walk. And a, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, 
to ask alms or to ask money, to beg for, for money, to beg for food, to beg for clothes, for those who entered the temple. Now he was smart because he knew, listen, if you're going to get, you know, the church, because, because God is a good God, we also know that God is a God of grace, which means God is a good God and God is a giving God. And that's what the church is called to be, a giving God. We give of our fruits, our we give of our fruits, our gifts, our time, our prayers. Amen. And God blesses. And so it's, he was at the gate beautiful, and that's a beautiful word for the gate beautiful, to, to, to um, ask alms from those who entered the temple, who seeing, verse 3, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask for alms, money, clothes, food, whatever they had to give him to make his life, because he couldn't do anything else. Do you get it? He was always carried always carried. Someone always had to carry him. He had to always be carried by someone else. He could not carry himself because he was lame. Now, what is my meditation? What is the meditation? God's attitude towards sickness, disease, and oppression. And remember, with I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with... Uh, the you know physical sickness, physical disease, and physical oppression, but not just physically, emotionally, spiritually, otherwise, because you can be you can be psychologically oppressed, you can be emotionally oppressed, and sometimes physical oppression comes from emotional oppression. It is a fruit of emotional oppression. God wants to set us free from all of it. Remember, we read Isaiah. Jesus comes to set captives and prisoners free. What we may have done to cause our own problem, that's a prisoner. What someone else has done to us, that's a captive. Either way, we can't get out. And God, by his anointing, has come to deliver us. Who's, verse, verse three, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temp temple, ask for alms. And verse four, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. Oh man, if we had time. I just got one more minute before we begin to pray. Verse five, so he gave them his attention. That's why I, that's why I told you right before, giving you my attention. That's why I said, we are going to pray. That's why I say, Put your hand on your head or call someone who needs prayer or mention because it's given your attention to the moment. Remember, even when you're being prayed for, you're not passive because you are reaching out with your faith. It's not seeing what I have, what some other preacher has. It's seeing what God has and what God is willing to do. And remember, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that God first is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek, seek him. Don't quit at the midnight hour. Be like Paul and Silas. Pray and sing praises in the midnight hour. Fixing their eyes. And he gave them his attention, expecting, I want you to turn to somebody right now, and even if the somebody is you, Turn to yourself or turn to somebody and say, I am expecting to receive something. I am expecting to receive something. Say it again. I am expecting to receive something. Come on, say it one more time. When you speak, you release your faith. You know why? Proverbs said, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Jesus told his disciples, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Even when we address the devil, we don't mentally cast out the devil. We verbally cast him out by saying, come out in the name of Jesus. When you pray, he said, say, not think, say our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You say it with your mouth because words have spiritual value. 
Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And after we pray, don't let your mouth mess up your miracle. Let your faith, let your prayer, and let your words match, not clash. Let the colors of your faith, the colors of your prayer, and the colors of your words match, not clash. He gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Let me tell you something. A satisfied customer is the best form of advertisement. You ain't got to tell somebody to come to Jesus because when somebody's touched, you know, let me go on because we're already at the time. So let me just read it and we'll pick back up here next week. So he gave them attention, verse five. Then Peter said, now watch now, watch what he said. Peter then said, silver and gold I do not have. Now catch it now, get the understanding. It didn't mean we don't have any money. That's not what they were saying, because they had money. What he's saying is money for your condition is not what you need at this moment. In other words, listen, writing a check. See, listen, you cannot solve a spiritual problem with a natural solution. Y'all better hear me. Let me say it again. You cannot solve a spiritual problem with a natural solution. I can guarantee you in any church, you want, you want to know what makes a strong church? Strong believers. What makes a strong church is strong individuals, spiritual individuals. You don't always unite around doctrine because we're going to disagree on some things. But you can you can unite around vision. That's why he said without a vision, the people perish. Because what is a vision if the church is divided? It's division. Ah, but when you've got a couple of people who say, I'm going to seek God. And like, 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 like Jacob, I refuse to take no for an answer. And I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Like Moses before an impossible situation. What's in my hand? I got a rod. God's going to use it. Let me stretch it out. Use what you got. And the question becomes, what are you doing with what God has given you? So he's saying, what you need now is not me writing out a check because medical science has not helped you. This money is not going to solve your problem. You need money, brother, because you need to eat. You need clothes because you need to be covered. But I'm going to give you what you really need. And he said, he, he said, silver and gold, I do not have. In other words, this is not what you need. But what I do have, good God from what, what did they have? They had the name of Jesus. They had the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you something. I'm jumping ahead and I promise I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray right now. But let me tell you something. Listen carefully, church. Listen carefully, my sister and my brother. The anointing has intelligence. Which means the anointing is more than a feeling. The anointing is a person. John chapter, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27. King James, you have an unction or an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. And then verse 27 says, even as the anointing teaches you, things don't teach. Persons teach problem with the church today is we've been running after an emotional, spiritual roller coaster. We've been chasing a feeling and the feeling is fine. But what happens if we're not feeling it? The Holy Spirit is present right now and he's a person and he's God. So the anointing has to intelligence. What do I mean by that? The anointing comes to you right where you are and it's not up to the preacher to prove it. God himself said, come unto me, you come unto me, not to the preacher, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Can you imagine, can you imagine being in this state for 40 years, 40 years, 40 years as we read down, can I give some encouragement to you? Listen, life begins at 40. Y'all don't hear what I say. You don't believe God renews youth. Yes, he does. Life begins at 40. Not ends. He, he said, then, then said Peter, verse six, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, in other words, what you need, I got the anointing, I got the power of the Holy Ghost, and I have the name of Jesus. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, I want you to notice this miracle 
he never walked in his life. He didn't break his leg. He didn't become crippled, become crippled. He never walked. See, he, does, he didn't know what it was to walk. He knows what it is to be carried by someone else. Ah, but when God steps in, he'll take those past 40 years. He said, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Did you know God will take you by your hand right now and lift you up where you are? And immediately, I want you to look at somebody and say immediately, right away, not tomorrow, immediately his feet and ankle bones receive strength. What's the first thing that God happens to you when God ministers to you? He gives you strength. So he leaping up, what? The man doesn't know what it is to leap or jump. So the miracle had to be even deeper than his legs becoming strong. Immediately, he had a, a miracle crash course in knowing how to walk. So he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them. Watch now, here's why I end, with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Did you hear it? Walking, leaping, and praising God. One more time, walking, leaping, and praising God. Here's the witness, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. I'm closing now, we're gonna pray. Healing, listen carefully. This is God's attitude towards sickness, disease, and oppression. That was not God's will for him. Healing gives you experiential authority to worship and praise God. When you are healed, when God touches you, you will know how to worship because the anointing has intelligence. Ain't nobody going to tell you, well, now what you should start doing is saying, praise the Lord. Nah, nah, nah. You haven't walked for 40 years and all, all of a sudden God touches you to do what medical science and money and clothes couldn't do. And he touches you on the spot immediately. Let's pray right now. All right. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, those of you that need healing for your own body, I, I just listen, we're not going to. The Holy Ghost is saying to you right now, don't even complicate your miracle. Don't try to figure it out. I want you to speak out the name. Whether we're not talk, Don't give me a list. Just speak out the name. Whether it's you who need healing, say your name or a family member, just say it. God knows what they need. We're, spe we're specifically talking about sickness, disease, oppression. Just speak out the name. I Do call I myself. So Amen. Speak out that name. Come on. I'm not going to wait for you. Speak it out. You don't have to wait for somebody else. You, you can okay. unmute, I'm, this is your choice. You can unmute or you can remain muted and just speak it out where you are. So you don't have Amen. to mute. Amen. Go ahead, speak Musette. it out. Musette you McKelvey. It? Amen, keep on. Speak that it out, come on church. There you go, go. speak it out. There you go, go. speak it out. Amen, see God's here for it. Amen. Mary France Daniels. Yep, say it, speak it out. Elsa. I'm going to speak out, Terry. Go ahead, just speak it out. We got. I hear those Amen. names. The important thing is God hears it, and He hears your He hears your faith. Amen. That's it. God, yep. Snake yes, ma'am. I hear that. Snake God hears eyes. that. God's going to work for you right now. Hallelujah. Now the rest of you, I'm going to go on because of our time, but it doesn't take long to God for God to work a miracle. You can continue to speak it out. Good. Now I want you to notice. Oh, yeah. that. Amen. Amen. Notice that it happened immediately. I've seen immediate miracles. Or it may happen over a time. The fact is, expect, there you go, amen. The Lord hears that. I like to say the Lord hears that. He's got it. Amen. And as you speak that out, that's at the altar. God's taking that because he's hearing your faith. You're speaking out, you're speaking it because, uh, he's, because you're releasing your faith. Amen. No, um, I'm on. Amen. The Lord hears that. I'm also uh, speaking out the conflict in the nations of the world, Eastern Bloc nations, uh, and, for, and for all of those families that are suffering uh, right now, I'm speaking that out. All right. Now, you spoke that out. For those of you who are unmuted, unmuted and you spoke it out, God has those names. God knows the condition. God knows the situation. I want you to notice how fast this happened and immediately he knew the details. He didn't even have to say how long does it hurt? You know, 
who are you? He didn't need all those details. He, they knew that God knew. And all they needed was to take the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, if God can make a man who never walked walk after 40 years, nothing that you're dealing with is too hard for God. And so I want to pray right now. I'm believing God. All right. I want to pray um, specifically. I'm praying for um, I'm going to pray for all of you generally, but specifically I want to grab the name of, of Brother C. And uh, all of you that are praying, why don't you just put your hand on your forehead? That's all. I don't care where the condition is. Just put your hand on your forehead right now. Now, Father, just like you said in Psalm 107, you said you sent your word and healed them. You sent your word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Lord, we bring before you the, uh, this, this scripture, as you said, all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable. And so we're asking that this scripture will profit us, profit us right now. I'm asking you to meet for every condition that's represented on this platform, every person that needs it on the platform, and every family member that's represented by every person on the platform. I'm asking you to send your word and heal right now. I pray for Brother C. I, pr I put my hand on my chest. I'm asking you, Father God, for every anyone who has any kind of heart condition right now, Jesus, you are the vine. I am the branch. I've asked you to pump into our bodies new hearts, new organs, new livers, new kidneys, new lungs, new circulation, new arteries, new ventricles, new veins new backs, new shoulders, new necks, new eyes, new ears, new sinuses, new stomachs, new mm. bones, new marrow, new blood, new immune system, hallelujah, new circulatory system, new knees, new feet, yes, new brain cells, yes, Lord, new brains, uh, new yes, prostates, Lord. new wounds, new digestive systems, mm. yes, Lord, new Lord. new organs, the 100 trillion cells of our minds and bodies from the mm. top of our head to the soles of our feet be healed in the name of Jesus. Yes, I speak healing to your body in Amen. Jesus' name. I speak healing to your body. You know what it is, Lord. Touch them right where you, I speak I speak the lack of cartilage in your in your joints. Lord, oh, restore yes. the cartilage in Jesus' name. Just restore the cartilage right now. I speak the removal of arthritis and diabetes and high blood pressure in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, take us by the hand. Lift <laughs> us up right now by your wow. mercy. In the name of Jesus, by your in anointing. Ooh, glory, Ooh, the anointing right now in the name of Jesus. I don't believe in playing with sacred things, but the anointing mm -hmm. of God is moving for us right now. And I want you to say, I believe. You already I said, believe. I expect to I receive. Believe. And then Jesus, and then Jesus said in uh, uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 24, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Whether you in meet, and, and also I speak to tumors. I speak to hernias. I speak to cysts. I speak to any kind of growth in the body. And I speak to those growths in the name of Jesus Christ. I command them dissipate, disappear, cease from existence in the name of Jesus. I command every cancerous cell to surrender to the force of God's healing power. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I speak to lungs. I speak to the conditions of COVID-19 or the aftermath of COVID-19, any kind of health issues from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet. Touch them right now as I touch my own head. Touch by the power of your Holy Spirit, God. Everybody say, I believe, I receive. I receive. I receive. I pray yeah. for pain in your body from your head to your feet. I pray for pain. Every trace of pain come out of the body right now. Yeah. Those who have severe, severe back issues, deteriorating discs, uh, 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 the base of the spine. You can't lay. You can't sleep. You can't sit down long because of the, the in yeah. Jesus name, I command your back to be healed. I command your shoulders to be healed. 
Yes, Lord. Every yes. arm, every every yes, arm, really condition. Pain in yes, your Lord. knees, go yes, now. Uh, oh, pain in your ankles, go now. Pain oh, in your Lord. stomach, in your chest, in your lungs, in your shoulders, in your joints, in your hands, in your neck. Go now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Say it by faith. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Now, come on, a member of my family had a mass in their body. They went back uh, to, to, to get it to get it operated on and, and, and the x-ray showed that it was completely gone. It was vanished. They couldn't explain it. They didn't know how to say it. All they said was congratulations. Hallelujah yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. So I believe I receive. Give them thanks right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for delivering me from allergies. Thank you for delivering me from eczema, skin diseases, issues, whatever it is. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, I believe I receive. Say it with me. I believe I receive. Now give God thanks again. Lord, thank you, Lord. And keep Lord. on thanking him until thank your manifestation come. Be like Jacob. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah Amen. to God. In Amen. the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise, Amen. praise it be God. I praise it be God. Praise it be God. Mommy has a praise report. Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold on just a second. Okay. Amen. Let me just give let me give the um, let me give the benediction, uh, and then we can then we can talk. So, Father, right now I thank you for your your greatest uh, uh, apostolic blessings upon us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide upon you, the people of God, henceforth, now, and forever. In the name of amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Yes! Woo!